I'm a collector of vintage modern glass from the first two thirds of the 20th century. And I thought I'd pull some pieces from my collection to uh, perhaps demonstrate what I mean by vintage modern, uh, primarily in the early 20th century, there were efforts by artists and architects to clean up the lines and uh, uh, remove a lot of the excesses uh, that were apparent in glass, primarily in the late 1800s. Uh, so I'd like to show a few pieces and maybe this video will demonstrate what I mean by uh, cleaning up the lines. Uh, back in this corner here, I've got a variety of pieces, primarily from Salviati uh, in Italy, uh, from 1870s to the late 1890s. Uh, this would be a typical kind of piece back then. All sorts of uh, embellishments and really uh, great, uh, great technical prowess in the glass that these people were creating back then. And, uh, you know, I don't have the most elaborate pieces, but uh, some of these pieces got really wildly elaborate. And there was some efforts uh, uh, around the beginning of the, uh, the 1900s for people to start, uh, you know, cleaning up the lines, making things much more simple. Uh, oftentimes, if you're a collector of Italian glass, you'll hear great things about uh, Vittorio Zecchin working for, for Paolo Vanini, and uh, their claim is that uh, they played a major role in, in uh, making that modern look in, in Italian glass, and in some cases really reviving the Italian glass, uh, Murano glass industry. Uh, I've got a few pieces that might suggest that others were, were busy uh, cleaning up the lines as well. Here, for example, I was mentioning uh, Salviati. This is by Antonio Salviati. It comes from uh, about 1878, a piece of Italian glass. And uh, it's uh, quite uh, lovely. It's the, the glass is quite unusual and very modern looking. All, you know, jet black, matte black. Uh, it's called metalliform glass. And uh, you can see, well, maybe you can see there's there's little fawns faces or, or mythical creatures faces on the sides. But uh, I think this is a, a great example of proto-modern kind of design, even that, that rough hand crafted look too is, uh, is very, very modern and not out of place at all in a uh, contemporary shop. Uh, another uh, piece from 1898 comes from Christopher Dresser, a very important, probably the world's first industrial designer uh, uh, out of, uh, I think it was Scotland and uh, in the United Kingdom. This is a rose water sprinkler. Um, this was uh, primarily from areas in Persia where they would sprinkle perfumed water uh, throughout their, their homes to freshen the place up. But Dresser's Clutha glass was all very, uh, uh, very unique for the time. So again, um, the traditional rosewater sprinklers were often a little more elaborate and uh, Dresser designs are always quite sleek and, and shockingly modern. That's back before 1900. Uh, also, We've got a set of wine glasses here designed by Peter Behrens from Germany. Peter Behrens was a major German architect and uh, responsible for, for some really groundbreaking buildings and many designs, uh, industrial designs. Uh, so this is 1898. You can see how how smooth and clean those lines are. They they don't look like much to the modern eye. You know, we think of these as kind of uh, without great design qualities, but those would be shockingly clean and simple uh, for, uh, you know, 1898 standards. Uh, Coleman and Moser, a member, a major member of the uh, Vierna Werkstatt, 
uh, created this in 1905. This is a piece that was made by Lotz, designed by, by Moser. Again, just dramatically different from what was going on in, in design and, and glasswork, certainly, back in that time, 1905. Here's a piece by Benvenuto Verrovier, that's Erko Verrovier's father, 1914. Very modern looking. Has, you know, solid black glass with uh, aventurine gold in the trim, a light glass. It's also, you can't see it here, but it's got some iridization. Looks lovely. 1914. So then we get to pieces by uh, Vittorio Zecchin. And again, he did a lot to clean up classic Italian designs. And his Safiati glass is particularly light glass, very, you know, uh, air bubble like, very clean, light glass, just kind of celebrating glass itself. Here's a piece of his that also includes uh, Bollaccini, those bubbles to create a little bit of an effect. But other than those bubbles, there's, oops, no problem. There's very little embellishments. Here's a piece that he did in cobalti glass, beautiful blue glass, a fruit jar. This, uh, this has a lid, hard to find cobalti glass. There's a very large Vittorio Zeckin vase back there. Candlestick at the front here. Beautiful pair of, uh, of cups. And again, uh, the glass itself would have been designed by Zeckin and then embellished with some, some gorgeous foliage with birds. Uh, you can see the birds there. That's a design by uh, Guido Balsamo Stella. And uh, very lovely. So he's sort of broken a bit of his rule, or, or they have in terms of keeping the glass free of, of uh, embellishment. Uh, just moving on to the edge here, in the mid 30s, you know, once uh, uh, Vanini was progressing along through the 30s, they brought on uh, uh, Carlo Scarpa, and Scarpa made especially clean line bowls. These are very heavy, quite, that's a departure from the thin glass of, of uh, Zekin. But, uh, Beautiful bowls. Here's one in Caroso glass. This is the effect where they actually uh, uh, put the piece of glass in a sawdust that's been uh, drenched in, in acid, and that creates that effect on the glass when it's all cleaned up. You can probably see that Caroso finish. Lovely. A little bit of iridization. Here's Polo Garso. Again, the the modern spirit of uh, letting the material itself kind of uh, bring bring the beauty out in the piece, and not embellishing the piece except for the forms and the the materials. And back here, just to show that you know the the uh, Italians weren't the only ones doing great modern glass at the time. This is. This is again another, you know, bohemian piece of glass, probably designed by Joseph Hoffman. Uh, beautiful paneled glass. Getting very modern lines, getting towards the Art Deco, but uh, probably preceding Art Deco. So that's just a brief tour of some of the pieces in the uh, earlier years of the of the 20th century and uh, maybe I made a point I hope you found this interesting if you're a glass collector uh, I hope uh, it was meaningful to you and uh, I try and 
carefully uh, uh, carefully study the the pieces that I own. And if you have any thoughts for me or any suggestions uh, about what my pieces uh, are all about, I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks a lot. Bye.